Hi, I'm David Pollandine, Director of Development in the Prairies for IGM Canada. And I'm here again to give you some updates about how IGM are continuing to protect the poor from violence during this time of COVID-19. IGM protects the poor from violence in three ways. First of all, with an, an immediate response, helping people affected by COVID-19 now. Secondly, by a near-term response, continuing to do investigations and rescues. And thirdly, a long-term response, partnering with governments to protect the poor from violence and slavery. So first of all, for an immediate response, helping people affected by COVID-19 now. And for that, we're going to Guatemala. During this pandemic, there have been many challenges to deal with for our field work um, offices around the world. Lockdowns have meant investigations and rescues have been much more difficult to carry out. And where rescues have taken place, accessing shelters for aftercare has been difficult. And of course, carrying court cases forward as well has been a challenge. But there has been some positives and we've made giant steps in some areas which wouldn't have happened otherwise. One area is the goodwill, is gaining the goodwill and favour from both local government and police as we've reached out to vulnerable communities with food and hygiene, with equipment and even provided PPE for police. During lockdowns, IGM Guatemala staff have been able to provide face masks, disinfectant and cleaning supplies and toilet paper as immediate COVID-19 relief to local investigation units in Guatemala City, Escuantla and Coban, the cities with the highest number of violence reported. Here is a thank you video made by an investigator of the National Police. Agradecemos a IJM por la donación de estos productos de limpieza para y desinfectantes, lo que, lo que nos va a permitir prevenir el COVID-19. Gracias. Estamos a la orden. We are very hopeful and positive that this goodwill and favour will greatly benefit our work going forward as we partner with local governments and police. So secondly, a near-term response, continuing to do investigations and put on rescue operations. For this, we are going to South Asia. In IGEM's first global rescue operation of the year, our team in South Asia supported local authorities to free 41 people from bondage at a railway construction site. This included 13 young children who lived at the site with their parents. The families had been brought from the nearby state where they belong to a disadvantaged ethnic community. Traffickers lured them with generous payment advances up to 120,000 rupees, about $1,600 per family, and gave promises of good pay and fair work. Instead, the advances were used, of course, as debt traps to keep the families working non-stop. The contractor said that they could not leave without paying off the advance for their labor, but he kept adding more charges every day to keep the debt growing. After two years without sufficient food or shelter, the families were losing hope that they would never go free. Well, IGEM's casework partner, FST, heard about the family's plight and alerted our staff and local authorities in the area. Well, we co coordinated the local government to conduct a rescue operation on the two work sites on January the 7th. And authorities helped families pack their few belongings and provided them with short-term lodging and food as they began to recover. We help the survivors return home, where they'll get obviously the long-term care they need in order to rebuild their lives and, and to have freedom. So the IGM and FSD continue working with local officials on how to hold the owners at construction sites um, accountable for enslaving these families. And potentially we'll do this through the National Human Rights Commission. Thirdly, for a long-term response, partnering with governments to protect the poor from violence and slavery. And for this, I'm going to focus on a campaign here in Canada, where we're committed to working with and supporting the Canadian government. Over the past three years, we've been supporting the all-party parliamentary group to end modern slavery and human trafficking, so that we can bring legislation that actually requires companies to be transparent in regard to slave labour in their supply chains. It touches all of us as pr the products that we use every day can have slavery in their supply chains from clothing to coffee to cell phones to makeup to chocolate. In October, the all party group reintroduced 
a bill again, which had unfortunately died a year ago. With this in mind, IGM Canada are challenging Canadians to join a freedom challenge this February from the 17th of February to the 3rd of April. And we're calling it Give It Up For Freedom. Simply go and register on the link on the screen and then do three things. Give it up. So choose an at-risk product to give up for 40 days. Donate. Give the money that you save and encourage family and friends to support your campaign. And challenge. Complete weekly challenges that we'll email out to you. Tag a justice-loving friend to join you in your hashtag Give It Up For Freedom 2021 challenge. Thank you for your continued support as we walk with vulnerable people in poverty, suffering violence and slavery, which of course has been amplified during this time of COVID-19. I'll see you again in a few weeks. Thank you. God bless and stay safe. Bye-bye.